Okay, in this video lecture, we are going to talk about lecture 11. Uh, so in this in this um, YouTube video link, um, we will cover all the topics included in lecture 11. Um, and this lecture has already been uploaded on your eCampus and I have also attached it in your email so you can easily access it as I am going through the lectures. So last class we talked about, we briefly introduced the four types of market models. Um, under a capitalistic society, perfect competition, monopoly, monopolistic, and oligopoly. And then we talked in details about the revenue relationships for a firm operating in a perfectly competitive environment or in a perfectly comp or in a pure competition market. So today we are going to look at the cost side and profit side. Um, and try to analyze, you know, at what point the firms in this type of industry or in this type of market structure should operate, where, at what point the firms maximize their profit. Because the, the main objective of the firms is to minimize their costs so they can maximize their profit. So there are two methods you can calculate the pro maximum profit for a firm operating in a pure competition. And those two methods are the total revenue approach and the marginal approach. Okay, so for a firm that is operating in a perfectly competitive industry, there are two methods to calculate the profit maximizing point as well as the corresponding output. Um, you know, what is the output that gives us the highest profit? So first we will look into the total revenue approach which is um, you know starts from slide 3 of this lecture. So total revenue approach simply basically finds out the difference between the total revenue and the total cost and that is your profit right. So profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. This will give how much profit the firm is making in the industry and the point where the difference between the total revenue and the total economic cost is maximum that is where economic profit is maximized or that is where the profit is maximized okay again let me repeat it when a firm when the difference between the total revenue and the total economic cost is maximum that's where profit is maximized for a firm in a perfectly competitive industry okay so but one thing to remember is first I want to explain what normal profit and economic profit is so normal profit is when you get a profit of zero dollars when you are generating revenue that covers all the cost and there's nothing additional left so that's normal profit and economic profit is basically when you know it is greater than zero when your profit is greater than zero then it is called economic profit so what is most important to remember under the perfectly competitive industry for this type of market structure a farm can earn economic profit in the short run so in the short run they can have profit greater than zero but in the long run the profit will always be normal meaning the profit will always be zero in the long run for a firm operating in a perfect competition market. So if let's say if I am a cabbage producer and I operate in this agricultural industry which is in a perfect competition market structure, in the short run I can make some profit but in the long run the profit I will be making is equal to normal profit which is zero. So let me show you an example of how to um, calculate the profit and find out what is the profit maximizing point uh, using an example. So let me shift to this uh, whiteboard and give you the example. So let's say you're given with this table. You have price, you have quantity, then you need to find total revenue. And you're also given with average total cost. You need to find total cost and then you need to find profit. Okay, so these are the columns you have. Let's in and now, if you remember from the last lecture uh, or the last video lecture, 
the price remains the same you cannot charge more or less than the market price if you are operating in a pure competition market structure right remember the it's a horizontal it's a horizontal demand curve so the price remains the same no matter what the quantity is because if you're charging more than the uh, market price then all your consumers will just shift to your the other suppliers if you are charging below the market price you're not covering your costs and you will basically be making losses so it's, it's not a rational decision so let's say in this case the price is eighty dollars and it remains the same all five we are considering five points and all these five points the price will remain the same because it is a perfectly competitive market then we are given with quantity okay let's say this um, I am the farm and I produce only one unit or the, in the second point I produce two units in the third point I produce three units and so on four and five and then we are also given with average cost let's say the average cost to produce one unit of this output is hundred and fifty dollars and then to produce two units the average cost is 110 then it's $90 these are given to you $80 and again $90 okay so this information is given to you now based on this information I may ask you to complete the table and then I will ask you what is the profit maximizing point and what is the profit max what is the profit and also what is the quantity that corresponds to the profit maximizing point okay so we will start off by calculating the uh, total revenue now total revenue is always equals to price times quantity so price times quantity that's total revenue right so whatever price you're getting and the number of units you're selling if you multiply those two you will get your total revenue so in this case your total revenue is 80 times 1 which is eighty dollars in this case if if you're selling two units price still remains the same so it will be hundred and sixty dollars in this case it will be two forty eighty times three in this case it will be three twenty eighty times four and in this case it will be four hundred eighty times five okay now we know the total revenue then we calculate the total cost how do we calculate the total cost total cost will be your average total cost the cost to produce the average cost to produce one unit multiplied by the number of units you're selling okay so in this or you're producing so in this case your per unit cost is 150 and you're producing one unit so your total cost is 150 times 1 which is 150 in this case your total cost is 2 which because you're producing two units two units multiplied by 110 which is your average per unit cost so that's 220 okay if we look at the third column or the third row you're producing three units of output three units of output and the per unit cost is $90 so your total cost will be 3 times 90 which is $270 and then the for the next column we are producing 4 units and your cost is $80 per unit so 4 times 80 is $320 and then the finally you are producing 5 units and your average total cost is $90 is equal so your total cost will be 5 times 90 which is $450 okay so now we have the total revenue column we also have the total cost column now we need to find the profit now we know the profit we have seen in the slide that I was talking before profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost so in this case for each level we know or for each unit we know what is the total revenue and what is the corresponding total cost and that way we can calculate the profit okay or loss so let's say for the first column your total revenue is 80 but your total cost is 150 so in this case you are actually making a loss of minus 70 dollars so it's basically 80 minus 150 in the next level your total revenue is 160 and your total cost is 220 so 
If you do 160 minus 220, you're still making a loss of $60. In the, at the next level, your total revenue is 240 and you are, your total cost is 270. So if you subtract, your loss is minus 30. Now, one thing if you notice, as you are producing more and more, you are covering your losses are going down, right? If you are producing one unit, you're actually making $70 loss. But if you're making three units or if you're producing three units, you're only making $30 loss. So as you're producing more, in this case, the profit or the loss is going down, which is good for you because you want to produce more and cover your fixed costs. So that's the main thing. As you're producing more, probably your fixed cost is getting down because fixed cost remains fixed and you, as you produce more, the cost starts going down. So that's why your losses are going down. Now, if you look at the point four, your total revenue is 320 and your total cost is $0. So your profit, sorry, your total revenue is 320 and your total cost is also 320. So your profit is 320 minus 320, which is equals to $0. Okay, and lastly, again, now the average cost starts going up again. So your total revenue is 400, but your total cost is 450. So you start making losses again because probably now it's inefficient. You're not using the resources properly, and that's why your cost is going up and you're starting to make losses. So if you remember in the slide before, I just mentioned that under a perfectly competitive market, under a perfectly competitive market, a firm will only make normal profit in the long run, which means they will only make $0 in the long run. So their profit maximizing point is this, $0. So the maximum profit they make in the long run, maximum, because the others are negative, right? These, those, they are making losses in the place. Only in this place. They are covering all their costs and they're making a normal profit of zero dollars and this is their maximum point and the corresponding quantity. So what at what quantity, what quantity what they are producing that pro gives a zero dollar profit that is four units of quantity, right? So four is your corresponding output. So this is the revenue approach. This is ba basically how we will calculate the profit and figure out what is the profit maximizing point and what is their corresponding output. It's pretty straightforward and simple and I, I'm pretty sure this example will help you to understand what's going on. Okay, so then we move on to the next slide. Um, this basically, this, this slide talks about the results. You know, if you see the maximum profit is at quantity four and with a normal profit of zero dollars. So when we say the normal profit is zero dollar, it includes all the costs, including the compensation of the partners. So, so it includes the compensation of the owners. And after that, it is zero dollars. OK, so then we move on to the next um, uh, approach or next method to calculate the profit maximizing point for a firm operating in a pure competition market structure and that uh, market structure is uh, or that method is called the marginal approach. So under this approach, a firm will produce as long as the profit exists or the loss are less than the fixed cost. So in this type of uh, this approach says that a firm will continue to produce as long as they are making profit or as long as their costs or as long as their losses are less than their fixed costs, as long as they can cover their fixed costs, then they will continue to produce. Even if they're making small losses, they will still continue to pro produce as long as they can pay their fixed costs. So that's what this approach is saying. In other, in, 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 in other words, there's a, this approach says that the profit is maximized for a firm in this type of competition when marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost as long as the price is greater than average variable cost. So in other words, under this approach, under this approach, profit is maximized, profit is maximized when marginal revenue is equal to your marginal cost as long as price 
is greater than your average variable cost. If the price is less than your average variable cost, then probably you are not being able to cover your fixed cost and you're making too much losses. So this is the point where the profit will be maximized for a firm in the industry and the firm will operate at this point. Okay, so um, uh, to look at some other conditions in this slide, we are saying if MR is greater than MC, the firms will produce until MR is equal to MC. Okay, so what we are trying to say here is basically we are looking at the different conditions and let me show you in the board. So the three types of scenarios that can happen. If MR is greater than MC and given price is also greater than average variable cost, then firms produce more. So in other words, they will increase their production. If this is the scenario, they will increase their production until MR equals to MC where profit is maximized. So what we are trying to say is if the marginal revenue is greater than the marginal cost then and, and the price is greater than average variable cost, then firms will produce more. They will increase their production until and unless MR is equal to MC because this is the profit maximizing point. So that's one situation. Okay. If this situation is there, then firms will produce more. Okay. Then the other situation is if MR is less than MC, your marginal revenue is less than MC, but your price is greater than average variable cost. In this case, farms will reduce production until MR is equal to MC okay so in the scenario if marginal revenue is less than marginal cost and you are also have prices greater than average variable cost then what will uh, firms do will do firms will reduce their production so if they are reducing their production that means the marginal cost will be going down and this will go on until marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost when profit is maximized. So this is the second condition. The first condition we saw is when MR is greater than MC and price is greater than AV, AVC. In that case, firms will increase production. In the second case, if MR is less than MC but price is still greater than AVC, firms will still produce. Even though they are making losses, they will still produce but they will reduce their production until MR is equal to MC. Okay. And then we have the third condition third condition basically says if mr is less than mc and price is also less than average variable cost then firms will produce firms will produce zero units in this case the firm will not operate in the market at all it is known as the shutdown situation okay so they are unable to cover their fixed costs even they are making so much losses that it does not make any rational sense for them to stay in the market okay so that's why they will make zero units in fact if they are producing more their loss will be going up more so it makes no sense to produce more so there will be zero units, it's a shutdown situation and they will leave the market in this type of situation. Uh, a firm whose marginal revenue is less than marginal cost and the price is also less than average cost, average variable cost, then that firm will basically shut down and leave the industry. So these are the three different conditions under the marginal revenue approach. And this is also what I just wrote is also in your slide. In this slide, if you see slide six, of the lecture it basically says the same thing on the first line it says if MR is greater than MC then firms will produce more 
as long as price is greater than ABC until until it gets to the point where MR is equal to MC and then on the other hand if MR is less than MC and price is still greater than ABC then they will reduce their production and in the situation which is the last line when MR is less than price and MR is also less than ABC MR is less than marginal cost and price is less than average variable cost then at that point it's you know you cannot you will produce zero units because you cannot even cover your fixed costs. If you basically produce more, you will be incurring more losses. And this is known as the shutdown scenario. So let me do an example for the marginal approach and then explain how we can calculate the profit maximizing point. And then we will also do a graph so you understand what exactly go on. Visually, you can relate what's going on and then understand what's going on. So again, let's say you're given with a table, you have price, you have quantity, you have total revenue, you have average total cost, you have total cost, but this time you have marginal cost also because this is the marginal approach, and then you have profit. Okay, so again, under a perfect competition, price remains the same, so we assume price will remain $80 for this type of product in all the five points we are looking at okay and let's say the quantity is one two three four five and then average cost we're also given with this information 150 110 90 80 these are given you don't you're not calculating these are given to you okay so this is given to you now I ask you to calculate or complete the table and then find out the profit maximizing point again we start with the total revenue total revenue is basically just price times quantity so here it's 80 times 1 is $80 again a in the second row it's 80 times 2 is 160 third column is 80 times 3 which is 240 in the fourth column it's 80 times 4 which is 320 and in the last column is 80 times 5 which is 400 so these are your total revenue and then we calculate the total cost which is basically your average total cost times your quantity so that's equals to that's equals to uh -oh, something happened let me write the revenue again 80 160 240 okay now we calculate the total cost so total cost is again you know just what I said average total cost times your quantity so 150 times 1 is 150 then 2 times 110 is basically 220 that's your total cost then 3 times 90 is basically 270 then 4 times 80 is basically 320 and lastly 5 times 90 is equals to 450 all right now we have one additional column which is the marginal cost now marginal cost will be in between the total cost right we will have what is the additional cost to produce one additional unit of output so basically it will be in between these items right it's not going to be at the same level it will be in between the total cost so basically when you are increasing your production from one unit to two units your total cost increases from 150 to 220 dollars so your marginal cost is 220 minus 50 which is 70 dollars in the next column or in the next part when you increase your production from 2 to 3 units, your total cost increases from 220 to 270. So in this case, your marginal cost is the difference between your two total costs is 270 minus 220 or $50. Same way, if we look at the next column, we will just subtract 320 minus um, uh, 270 and in between we have $50. And finally, the last point in between 320 and 450, 
if we subtract 450 minus 320 we have a marginal cost of hundred and thirty dollars now if you see one thing the marginal cost is high at first then it's going down and then it goes up after a certain point this is because of the diminishing uh, marginal cost uh, concepts that we learned you know after certain point your cost starts going up because you know it becomes more inefficient and basically uh, your cost starts going up and then revenue we calculate the same way total revenue minus total cost in this case we have minus 70 here we have minus 60 here we have minus 30 here we have 0 and here we have minus 50 so now we have the table so now using the marginal revenue approach which basically says marginal re under the marginal revenue approach we basically say profit is maximized where marginal revenue is equals to marginal cost now remember under remember one thing under the perfect competition if you remember price is equals to average revenue and price is also equals to a marginal revenue so price is equals to P is equals to a R equals to M R in a perfect competition right it's from your last class so here what is the point where marginal revenue $80 is equal to your marginal cost $80 so we do not have a direct number so we see if you are producing three units or if you are producing between three and four units your marginal cost is $50 and if you are producing between four and five units your marginal cost is $130 so probably somewhere in between these two numbers 50 and 130 dollars you will have a marginal revenue of or marginal cost of 80 dollars somewhere in between this 50 and somewhere in between this 50 and 130 you will have the 80 so basically under this rev marginal revenue approach we will say that the profit is maximized at this four unit and the profit is zero if you see that is where we have it's zero and the reason is the same you know basically somewhere in between these two items we have uh, marginal cost equals to 80 and that's where marginal cost will be equals to marginal revenue so your quantity profit maximizing quantity is 4 and your profit at that point will be $0 again we all know that under perfect competition the profit the norm we only make normal profit which is equals to zero zero dollars okay the, I also wanted to show you a graph of this especially in the short run how will the firm operate so basically oops I'm sorry so we have again quantity and price okay then we know that the demand curve is horizontal which is equals to your price which is equals to your MR and it's also equals to your AR or average revenue under a perfect competition then we know marginal cost curves looks like this so that's your marginal cost curve and let's say this is your average variable cost curve and this is your average total cost curve okay so we are given with this in this scenario we the profit maximizing point will be at this point a because at a if you see this line is MR and this is the point where it intersects the MC curve so MR equals to MC so this is the profit maximizing point this is the profit maximizing point and this quantity is the profit maximizing quantity so that's what we are trying to do that's I'm just using a graph to explain what we are trying to do in this case So moving on to the lecture
so pure competition or farms operating in the pure uh, in the pure competition market um, the profit that they make in the short run and long run can vary okay so remember in the beginning of this video lecture i said in the short run they can earn some economic profit so they can probably earn some revenue or they can probably earn some profit greater than zero but in the long run the firms in this type of market structure will always earn zero dollars or zero normal profit okay basically what i by zero dollar i mean zero normal profit this is because what happens is if there's a farm let's say i am the i'm the farm i produce cabbage in the market and i can i'm making money you know so i'm making money by selling cabbage in the short run well in this type of market structure it is very to e it is very easy to enter the industry so when others let's say fernanda patrick diego they see that oh um, nafiz is making a lot of profit so or even if we can enter the market we can also make the profit so what happens is in the short run even if i'm making economic profit other firms will enter the market and then this profit will go away and we'll all come in the long run all of us will earn zero normal profit okay the opposite is also true if i am making loss in the market if i am making losses in the market in the short run then what i will do is i will leave the industry and as a result in the long run the normal profit uh, the other firms will start earning normal profit this happens because the barriers to entry and barriers to exit in this type of market structure is very low so that's why this this is possible and that's why in the long run there is only normal profit there is a lot of competition so that's why that's possible so again in the long run they will be at a very efficient point and basically there will be economies of scale they will in the firms will enjoy economies of scale they will be at minimum cost and at the same time consumers will be charged minimum prices and there will be very very they will be very efficient in the market okay but i wanted to show you the graph of a short run versus a long run and i also wanted to show how you can calculate the profit using the graph in the short run and um, i just compare it to the long run okay so let me quickly show you an example using two graphs so let's say this is short run and let's assume i am the firm in the short run and i am making profit i am making economic profit so i'm making more than zero dollars in the industry so my curve let's say is given by this so that's let's say is quantity this is let's say price okay now let's say we are given that the price or demand is equals to 65 dollars okay and then let's say we are also given with the marginal cost cost now remember in under perfect competition price is also equal to your marginal revenue curve so under perfect competition let's say your marginal cost curve is this is given this and this is 700 units okay and then we're also given with your average variable cost curve and we are given with your average total cost curve okay so let's say that's average total cost curve this is your average variable cost curve okay so we know the price is 65 dollars and we know they are producing 70 units so, so in this case what is my total revenue total revenue is price times quantity my price is $65 my quantity is $700 so my total revenue is 45,500 that's my total revenue now what about my total cost so for the total cost we we start at the point where the marginal revenue curve where this marginal revenue curve intersects the marginal cost curve we start at that point because that's the profit maximizing point and then we we go down we go down until it hits the average total cost curve and then we go 
horizontally back to find out the price and let's say this is $60 this is given to you this is $60 then this area this area of the rectangle represents your economic profit in the long run basically this is the amount of this area of uh, rectangle represents the profit that the firm is making in the short run okay and then this $60 is given to you I if, if I give you a problem I will give you this average total cost as well so you don't have to calculate that in case of a graph but your you know the average this is the average total cost so your average total cost is $60 but you're producing 700 units so your total cost is your average total cost times your quantity right so your average total cost is 60 times 700 and basically your total cost is 42,000 okay so that's your total cost now you know how to calculate to profit profit we know is equals to total revenue minus total cost which is equals to in this case is equals to 45,000 500 minus 42,000 it's equals to 3,500 so that's your economic profit you're making in the short run because it's more than zero right it's more than zero so we are making economic profit and this will only be in the short run okay so in the short run you're making an economic profit of three thousand five hundred dollars now when let's say that's me i am making three thousand five hundred dollars economic profit in the short run now when others will see this that i'm making profit they will quickly join the market because they will think they can also make this money so what will happen in the long run in the long run this economic profit will go away because of a lot of competition and the graph will look like something like this so in the long run, the graph will be, again, this is quantity, this is price, okay? This is your demand curve, which is price is equal to MR equals to AR. And let's say this is your marginal cost curve. This is your average, oh God, what? I don't know what what's wrong with this let me do it again sorry about that so in the long run your graph will look like this you have a demand curve which is equals to price equals to MR equals to AR and then you have the marginal cost curve and this is the profit maximizing point but in the long run the average cost curve, the long run average total cost will be at this point as well. Now, average variable cost may be lower. See, in this case, the price is greater than your average variable cost, but price is equal to your average cost. So, in the long run, the marginal revenue curve the marginal cost curve and the long run average total cost curve all intersect at the po same point so there is no more rectangle there so here profit is therefore equals to zero in this case because there's no rectangle no more rectangle so we have normal profit in the long run so in the long run we will have a curve like this in the short run we will we can have some economic profit we, we might have some losses as well in case of losses we'll get out in case of profit others will join the market and at the end of the day in the long run this whole thing will happen and all the firms will earn a zero normal profit basically they'll cover all their costs and their own compensation and then they will be left with zero dollars so that's how the cost and revenue curves will look like for um, a firm operating in a perfect competition in the short run and in the long run so hope that clarifies this um, concept
So, so then the last topic we talk about are the advantages and disadvantages of pure competition. Okay. So the advantages of pure competition is basically if you again remember in the long run there is no economic profit, right? There is no economic profit. So producers will be producing at the lowest cost. Again, if we go back to the graph, if you see the producers are producing at the lowest point, right? Producer, this is the long run average cost curve. Excuse me. This is the long run average cost curve and this is the lowest cost that consumers will get. So producers will produce at the lowest cost that means consumers will pay the lowest cost and they'll get the best prices because they are paying the lowest cost so they will be very happy they will be very satisfied so consumer satisfaction is maximized okay so this is one of the biggest disadvantage in this advantage because consumer satisfaction is maximized then secondly Efficiency is also maximized in this scenario because cost is minimized. So firms are very efficient on at the same time customer satisfaction is also maximized. So we have both productive efficiency and we have both allocative efficiency. And finally, there is a lot of competition in the market. There is a lot of sellers, you know, it's they compete with one another consumers. You know, th that's good for consumers because consumers pay lowest cost. And there's a lot of com competition among the farm. And as long as we have more competition, we will have more efficient market. So these are the advantages of pure competition. However, pure competition also has some disadvantages. And if you look at slide 11 of the lecture 11, we discuss about the lecture uh, about the disadvantages. So the first disadvantage is, you know, the main focus is to minimize the cost. So the farms, if I am not under minimized cost, then I will probably may be making losses and I will have to leave the industry. So I'm under constant pressure to lower my cost. So when, when I, am under, I am under constant pressure to lower my cost, it can result in spillover cost. If you remember, spillover cost is like a negative externality. You know, um, it's basically because I am doing something, it affects third parties. So let's say if in order to reduce my cost, I am creating a lot of air and water pollutions that will probably give lower prices to the consumers but it will harm the society as a whole because pollution a lot of people will be affected those who are not even involved in the transaction will be affected so basically because there is a constant pressure to lower your cost it can create spillover cost or it can create negative externalities that affect everyone in the society Another disadvantage of this type of market structure is basically they do not cater for social needs. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, if I if I if I um, I have low income and if I'm not able to afford it, I will not be able to get the benefit. Basically, it does not cater for social needs. You know, producers and buyers realize benefit based on their productive in involvement. So if, if there's an individual who is unable to contribute productively, they will not get the benefit. They will not get the market benefit. So there's no mercy. There's no social benefit. There's no like, um, you know, under social system, like, you know, situations if, 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 if we say there are a lot of healthcare providers and people who are not able to afford it will not be able to afford it at all. So those are the disadvantages of it pure competition and with that I will the this lecture is complete that's it and that up to this whatever I spoke so far will be included in your midterm 2 which is next week now again midterm 2 will be from lecture 5 which starts with elasticity and until lecture 11 which talks about pure competition and the four types of market structure a little bit uh, so make sure you learn that I will be sending on a separate email with all the instructions when your exam will be available and what is the format of the exam how long is the exam so it's basically 35 multiple choice questions okay and then um, there are some calculations within the multiple choice questions so you might need a calculator and it's one hour 20 minutes which is your class time and also um, you know once you start it, you will not be able to close and, uh, and start it again but I will send out an email with all the instructions the exam reviews for I will email you guys on Thursday 
So, um, uh, you know, today you got, go over the lectures, see if you have any questions, any concern, anything you don't understand, specific topics you want me to discuss, you can email me and I will go over them. Uh, but on Thursday, I will be emailing you guys the exam reviews so you know what to study for the exam. With that, I'm going to conclude my um, uh, lecture here. Thank you very much. Um, and I hope, uh, you know, if you have any questions and hope you're, you will reach out to me. Thank you.